Welcome to Pips on Location. I'm Inspector Frank Maul of the Wilmington Fire Department. On this show, we're going to be showing you the Marine Division of the Wilmington Fire Department. At this time, we want to introduce you to Lieutenant Michael Carrizada. Lieutenant Carrizada, thank you for being on the show here today. Doing, Lieutenant Carrizada is the director or the officer in charge of the fire boat down here at the Marine Division. Now, Lieutenant Carrizada, since we're out here, could you start explaining to our audience what area of the boat are we on right now? Sure, right now we are located in the aft deck of the fire boat. Uh, this is primarily our working platform. This is where all the business happens on the boat. Uh, if we had to stretch hand lines to a ship that was on fire or another boat that's on fire, this is where all the work is going to take place. Uh, we tried to keep the, the deck open also because uh, if we're out and we're uh, on a medical emergency and we're going to airlift somebody off the boat or airlift uh, paramedics down to the boat, this is the area where they'll come down to. Okay. Now, how long is the boat? Uh, the boat is 70 foot over long okay. and uh, it's 23 foot wide. Okay. Now, you said you know, it has fire fighting capability. How much water does it pump? We pump 15,000 gallons a minute. Whoa. Okay. It's, uh, it has uh, the equivalent of four fire engines below that. Okay. All right. Now, you told me earlier something about a swimming pool. How many? Uh, we can fill an Olympic sized swimming pool every minute and a half. Okay. All right. Now, could you explain just a little bit more about back here what you know, other operations you could be doing off the, the back of here. I noticed we have a Zodiac boat above us. Yeah, we have a small rescue craft uh, located above us. Uh, we're fortunate this boat is jet drive. It's basically a, a big jet ski with four engines on it. Uh, we only draft three feet, but should we get somewhere that we can't get to because of water depth, then we'll go ahead and stay in deeper water and we'll use the davit crane to go ahead and launch the Zodiac and we'll place that in the water on the starboard side of the boat and we can operate from that to get either to land or to uh, shallower water where need be. Okay, you could probably put like divers and yeah. people like that on yeah. board yeah. that boat. We, we have put divers on this boat already and, okay. uh, and we've actually used it for uh, land-based recovery. Okay. All right, well, why don't we go ahead and go inside and you can take us around the inside of the, the fire boat. Sure. Now, Lieutenant, we're inside the, the cabin of the, of the fire boat. Could you explain where we're at right now? Sure. As you enter in from the aft deck into the, we call this the engineer's room. Uh, this room is designed for, one, if we need to work on something, we have workbenches where we can take place, uh, fix something, repair something, take it back down to the engine room and replace it. Also, we are set up with uh, two medical cots over here where we can treat two patients. Uh, we also have a cascade system, which is uh, supplying uh, the ability to refill breathing air cylinders if there was onboard uh, firefighting operations on a ship. And the ship uh, is also equipped with uh, umbilicals and air masks. So if we were entering a seaburn environment, we could actually go on supplied breathing air for approximately six hours. So does that mean like if you had to go onto a ship with fire hoses and start fighting the fire on they, the they, ship? They could lower their bottles down and we could start refilling bottles on board and then send them back up to the deck of the ship. Okay. Uh, over on this side of the boat also, we carry everything that the state requires an ambulance to carry. All right. So we are, well, essentially on the water, we are a floating ambulance and a floating fire truck. Oh, great. Now, do you train with the Newcastle County paramedics? You said the ambulance, do they go out and runs with you? Uh, Previously, we haven't done a lot of training with them, but this coming month of May, uh, we do have four dates scheduled where I believe all the paramedics from every platoon will be doing an on-the-water training day on Fireboat 7. Okay. Now, one other question. Uh, I understand that we are the only true fireboat from Philadelphia to Wilmington and then Wilmington all the way down to Ocean City, uh, Maryland. It, it, yeah. How's that? Uh, Philadelphia has, uh, we're actually classed as a Type 1. Uh, it used to be a Class A fireboat. Philadelphia does have two Class A's or Type 1 fireboats, but we are your true first Class A fireboat from the Atlantic Ocean coming into the Delaware Bay and Delaware River region. So if you were to have an emergency on board of your ship uh, coming into the bay, we are your first truly Class A platform that you're going to get. Okay, now how long would it tell you to take, say, to get down to Lewis from here? Uh, from where we're at at the Port of Wilmington now, for, if we left here right now and steam straight to Lewis, we would be there in about an hour and a half. Okay. All right. Well, why don't we go downstairs and take a look at um, the bottom of the ship? Sure. So right now we're entering what's considered the command center okay. of the boat. Um, obviously it is set up like a, a galley of a ship. We, you know, we don't have, it's not 110 feet. We have to make the, <laughs> we have to make the most uses out of the space we have. Uh, everything that can be done upstairs, aside from steering the boat and operating the fire pumps, can be done from down here. Uh, we have remote controls, which controls uh, the displays upstairs. 
Okay. So we can physically operate the thermal imaging camera, the FLIR camera, and uh, any of the electronics from upstairs. We can also use the keyboard and the mouse and take control of the desktop computer that's located upstairs. Oh, awesome. This is set up, uh, so we do have a city fire radio. We have a marine VHF radio to give us contact with other vessels that are operating. And basically the idea of this is to have all the decision makers for the incident down here in one spot where they can make decisions. And upstairs we can shut the cabin doors and the operations of the vessel are just contained within the pilot house. Okay, so you have all the incident command people down here and that way nobody's uh, um, interfering with the operations yes. of the vessel itself up there. Yes, because uh, like a, you know, a, a land-based incident, their, their command center is not floating up and down or moving. So we have to worry about keeping ourselves on station and safe while we operate. So we just why we try to separate the two. Okay. Now, Mike, or Lieutenant, excuse me. Um, if, say, we had an incident like they had up in New York a few years ago where they had an airplane had to land on the Delaware River. I know flight path goes right into Philadelphia out of here. Uh, could you be able to you know, do an incident like that off of this, this vessel? Uh, we are equipped to handle certain incidents on board the vessel. We are uh, in a flight path for the Newcastle County Airport along with Philadelphia International, and we tried to prepare for that. Uh, whether we can handle an entire incident ourselves, I don't think so. We would need mutual aid help. But we do carry uh, upwards of 100 life vests on the vessel, uh, okay. stored up in the bow storage and in the engineer's room above the uh, medical benches. So if we did have to respond to an incident such as that on the water, uh, we would be able to, to present a, a lot of life jackets and put a lot of people on board the boat until we could start a ferrying system to get them off the boat. Um, we wouldn't necessarily act as the ferry shuttle moving people to land. We would stay on station simply because of our size and we would treat the injured, triage the injured and start sending them out as needed uh, according to their medical priorities. And that's where you would need mutual aid probably from New Jersey, Newcastle County. The, I know the volunteer units have fire boats up and down the Delaware. Yeah, Philly Coast Guard, Philly Fire. Uh, okay. The volunteer companies in Delaware we would have out. How about Chester? Does Chester have any type of marine unit? No, Chester, uh, Chester got out of the business. Uh, their police department no longer has a boat either. Okay. All right. Okay, Lieutenant, before we go upstairs, could you explain to our audience what this room is up here off to the right? Sure. That's the what we call the V-berth of the boat. Uh, Primarily, that contains four bunks. Uh, their main use is for uh, crew comfort in case we're on station for an extended period of time. Uh, allows them to lay down and get some rest. But we decided when we were having the boat built that it would uh, also serve us to uh, stage it as a medical treatment area. So we had oxygen outlets put up front so we could uh, have the ability to treat four more patients if we had to on a mass casualty incident. Okay, well, why don't we go ahead and head upstairs and see the the command part of the boat, the, the brains of the boat, sure. like you were saying earlier, of how we steer it and go underway. Sure, we call it the wheelhouse or the bridge. Either there we go. Okay. okay, let's go look. Okay, what we're entering up here, this is known as the wheelhouse or the bridge of the vessel. This is where all the, the operations and controls take place for the ship. Uh, where I'm sitting right now is considered a helm. Uh, I have a two options of how we operate the vessel. We can go traditionally with a wheel and throttles like most other boats you've seen, or we can take control and operate the vessel from a single joystick controller. Like, like a big giant arcade game. Yes, it's, it's <laughs> uh, everything else up here is individual controls for engines. Uh, we have four engines and four jets. So should something fail with my throttles or wheel, I could actually switch every jet individually to the backup controls and I can steer them through joysticks also. So if, we, if something went wrong with either one of these systems, I could go back to a third system. To get back. Oh, that's cool. Now, what's the system set up over here, Lieutenant? Uh, these are all our Ray Marine electronics. Uh, we do everything from onboard uh, video monitoring of the vessel, uh, what's going on. Uh, I have a chart plotter that shows me uh, where we are uh, in relationship to the water. Uh, active radar, which is scanning live targets in the area, and we also have what's called AIS on board the vessel. It's called Automatic Identification System. Uh, every commercial ship's required to have it, and if you look closely at the screen, you'll see all the triangles. Those are all vessels that are within our location, and if I touch on one of them, it will, uh, I can view full AIS data, and that'll tell me that that is a tugboat, he's towing, and he's underway. He's okay. moving up the river. Uh, it just helps us if we're called out to an emergency, uh, and they kind of give me their location. I can start scanning for ships and find out exactly where they're at. And 
it brings us to yeah. them quicker. Now, is there any place on the river, say you're going down towards Delaware City, is there any place on the river that you have like rocks and, you know, any debris that might pose a threat to you? Would that show up on here also? Sure. Anything that's sticking up out of the water uh, will show up. Uh, you just you just have to learn how to use the equipment. We'll bring it in, we'll range it in. And uh, at night, we really range them in. We don't need to see what's miles ahead of us. We want to see what's right in front of us. And what you're seeing now is that's actually the land. Okay. Uh, that piece sticking out at the crosshatch there is that barge. This longer piece here is that barge. And that little blip in front of it is that white can that's in the water. Okay. So it just, you know, it gives us uh, hard targets show up in red. There's actually something smaller and softer in the water back behind us. And if you look over, it's actually a few birds sitting on top of some of them cans. Okay. Now this device over here, it says fluoro in here. That's a forward-looking infrared. Uh, it's an infrared camera. Uh, we actually carry what's called a dual payload camera on board. Uh, it's a forward-looking infrared, so it picks up heat signatures. And then we also have a, a thermal imaging camera. So uh, it's basically, it's night vision and uh, thermal cameras on board. And we can switch between the two views. Uh, that's help, that helps us. Uh, if we're looking for somebody in the water, we can switch it to a certain mode where it helps uh, cover up glare off the water. And we can search better for a victim in the water. And uh, we can also switch it to another view where if we're coming on board of, uh, up to a ship that's reportedly on fire, we can go ahead and scan the hull of the ship real quick, and it's going to give us a heat signature. One, we can see where the engine room is, and two, we'll be able to determine where the fire is on board the vessel before we even step on it. Technology today, correct? Right. It's, it, it's, our, it's our friend. Uh, ships are pretty much high rises on the water. Okay. Well, Lieutenant Karazai, we'd like to thank you for being on the show today, and we appreciate you taking us around and giving us a tour of Fireboat 7. Sure, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. But before we leave, we want to remind you, audience, on May 16th, it's National Boating Week. We ask the audience, please, if you're going out on a boat, make sure you wear your life preservers. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Pips on Location.